Hey everyone, welcome to my video on equilibrium changes. What we're dealing with today is a supply and demand market. And I've made a few videos building up to this. If you haven't watched them yet, you might want to. Uh, there's a link up in the corner for my equilibrium video that first combines supply and demand. We're going to start in an initial equilibrium where supply one and demand one lead to an equilibrium quantity and price of Q1 and P1. And then we're going to start introducing changes in our market. So for old times sake, let's say this is a market for tacos. That's what I did for my demand videos. We got a supply, we got a demand, we got a quantity, we got a price. I'm gonna leave numbers out of it for now uh, because if I just do Qs and Ps and you keep track of what you're looking at, you don't need to learn any specific numbers. Uh, maybe I'll do some more concrete examples with labeled graphs later, but for now I'm just writing stuff down. Uh, so let's start with a scenario. Let's say labor costs go up. And this could be modeled as an increase in minimum wage. This could be all the extra things we have to do to keep people safe during coronavirus. It can be whatever. So something makes our labor costs go up. What does that do to our market? Before we can answer that question, I'm gonna take you through a couple of steps that you will always want to do. Step one, you need to determine what is moving. Is it the supply curve or is it the demand curve? And so you're gonna, that part's gonna require you to use some intuition. Does the labor cost affect the process of how I build my tacos? in which case it moves the supply curve, or does it affect the process of buying and eating tacos? Probably not that one, at least not directly. So in this case, what is moving? The answer is the supply curve. Next step you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna determine, is it an increase or decrease? Is this going to increase or decrease quantity? In the case of labor costs going up, that's a supply decrease. And if you need to check on that, check out my supply shifters video, which is I think two videos ago in this series. And then from there, it's pretty easy. Draw, draw your change. So what's that look like for us? What's that look like for us? Well, we know that these labor costs lead to a supply decrease. That's to the left. And so we get this lower supply curve that's there. And we can draw the new equilibrium, which is at this point. So you get Q2 and P2. The equilibrium quantity decreased. The equilibrium price rose. So how do I summarize that? So if the labor costs go up, that means supply goes down, which means quantity goes down. Or sorry, equilibrium quantity goes down. Equilibrium price goes up. But as a side note, I should point out, the demand curve did not move. The process of buying and eating tacos is not directly affected by labor costs. It is affected because the price rises, but in no other way does it affect how much I enjoy a taco. And so the demand curve didn't move. I did not have to draw a new demand curve. Demand did not move. This is a very common mistake, so I'll say it again. Demand did not move. Um, what did happen is when I went from Q1 to Q2, my quantity demanded fell from Q1 to Q2. As the price rose, I shifted along the demand curve to a lower quantity. So. Yes, my people will eat fewer tacos, but no, it was not a decrease in demand. Demand is the same, but the price rose. Okay, hopefully that will make sense, but if not, no sweat, because we're about to do another example. What if instead of changing labor costs, what if we said that farmers had a great year and they had tons of corn Price of tortillas falls. If you've never had a taco or don't know what they're made of, tortillas are an ingredient in making them. So this is another input cost example. 
And so let's go through our three steps. First step, what is moving? This is another input cost example. It's going to be the supply moving. Second step, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, our costs just went down, which is good for businesses. It will enable them to produce more stuff at the same prices. And so this is going to be an example of a supply increase, which shifts to the right. And then we can draw that, and we will show that the quantity increases and the price falls. So let's summarize this. This was a supply increase, which meant that equilibrium quantity rose, equilibrium price fell, and then same argument about demand. The demand didn't move, but since the price fell, the quantity demanded increases. The price of hamburgers falls. I'm going to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that hamburgers and tacos are substitutes in consumption, which is to say that I will go out and I'll either eat a hamburger for lunch or I'll eat some tacos for lunch, but I probably won't do both. They're substitutable, at least somewhat. So question one, what is moving? Well, if they're complements, so, sorry, if they're substitutes in consumption and one of their prices moves, well, that's going to affect demand. So demand is moving. Is it increasing or decreasing? Let's think about it. Hamburgers just got cheaper. Does that make me want more tacos or less tacos? Probably less because I'm more likely to go and buy some burgers. So let's summarize this. It's going to be a demand decrease looks like this, which is going to lead to a lower quantity and a lower price. Equilibrium quantity falls, equilibrium price falls. Does supply move? No, we haven't changed anything about the production operations at the taco shops. Nothing about their business operations has, has changed. What has changed is the demand for their product. When the demand fell, the price fell. When the price fell, you shifted to a lower quantity from Q1 to Q2. And so you can say that the quantity supplied falls. All right, next example. People find out that taco seasoning prevents cancer. Note to you, this is not a medical video. Taco seasoning does not cure cancer to the best of my knowledge. I'm making crap up. But if people were to find out that taco seasoning prevents cancer, then we need to ask our questions. What's moving, demand or supply? Well, it doesn't affect the production process of making a taco, but it could change people's preferences for tacos. Not only do they taste good, but they're now also an investment in your health. So I'm gonna guess it's a demand shift. And it's a demand shift that makes us want to buy more. And so that's a demand increase. So that's a demand increase increase, which is a shift to the right. And if I want to show my new equilibrium, that's going to be higher quantities and higher prices. So equilibrium quantity rises, equilibrium price rises, and then the quantity supplied will also rise. But again, the supply curve didn't move. So that's all for this video. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to pick up right where we left off, and we're going to start moving two curves at a time and show what happens when supply and demand simultaneously move and how that can kind of complicate our analysis. I hope this video was helpful to you. If not, I hope another one is. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.